Hello, this is Ralph Stokely, and today I'm going to go through a quick procedure on what you need to do to change your lower unit oil in your outboard motor. And I'll go through some of the steps, and then we'll actually give you a real-world example of somebody doing it so you can see how to do it. It's a pretty simple procedure, but there's some steps you need to follow, and so you want to follow along as we go. If you find anything that's out of the ordinary, maybe some water in the lower unit oil, then you're probably going to need to stop and call a professional get some advice on what to do because there's some seals that might need to be replaced. But this is an annual maintenance you'll like to do every fall because you want to make sure if there's any water in there that you get it out before the chance to freeze and can crack the actual housing of the lower unit it can be quite expensive to repair or replace. So this is an annual thing that you ought to get in the habit of doing every fall and it'll make your outboard motor last for years and years to come. So first of all, I want to show you some of the things you're going to need. First thing, you'll need a quart of high performance lower unit oil. Mercury makes the one that's best for their motor, and we recommend you stick with the manufacturer's brand. They have a stake in doing this. They want to make sure that their motors last as long as possible, so we always use the manufacturer's brand on it. Also, you might want to get new gaskets for the drain screws so that you don't have a leak. You always want to change those every time you change it. That's just good maintenance on it because these things can wear out. The other thing you want to be careful about is you don't end up with two of these on one plug. So leaking is a possibility with no gaskets or with two gaskets. So you want to make sure you just have one per screw. And then you've got your drain screws themselves, which we're going to remove, put back in. You want to check the heads of them, make sure they don't have any damage where the last person that changed it didn't put a right size screwdriver in there. And perhaps the screwdriver might have torn up the threads on it or torn up the slot and you might need to replace it. The one in the bottom typically is going to have a magnet on it, and the magnet is there just to collect metal particles when you're shifting. It's very normal to get some small amount of metal in your lower unit. If you have metal in there much, then it may be some reason to call your dealer and let them take a look at it because a lot of metal can indicate that somebody's been shifting their motor slowly and not doing it like you should. So when you're shifting a motor, you should abruptly shift it into gear so that your gears go ahead and engage instead of slowly shifting like you would think on a car where you let the clutch out slow. On a boat, if you do that, what it does is it grinds before it goes into gears. And then when you'll get metal particles on your magnet in your lower unit, it's an indication we've got a problem inside. So we want to look for that. And then you've got your pump. And the pump is what you'll use to reinstall with. You'll use your pump to put it in, and there's a straw that comes with it. You take the straw, stick it in the bottom of the pump, and you always want to ensure that the chamfered edge or the cut edge is on the bottom side so when it goes into the lower unit or into the oil, it doesn't suck the bottom up and not give you the oil like you should. And then on the other end, you're going to have a threaded piece that'll screw into the bottom of your lower unit oil. Now, this is a $10.95 pump, makes it pretty inexpensive. The gaskets are $2, um, but it, and then $16 for the lower unit oil. So the whole thing's not going to cost you a whole lot to do. The pump you can reuse from year to year. Now, when we show you a real world example of us doing it in the shop, we're going to have an industrial pump that we put it in with. But this is all a, a a home project would ever need and again you can use this over and over for years to come you can even do your lower unit oil for your buddies so come over here to a motor all right so on the lower unit you're gonna find that the drain screw is the bottom hole down here and this is where the oil will actually come out of and then you've got your vent screw in the top you want to take these two screws out you want to move the bottom one first and you want to check and make sure that there's no water in your lower unit so if there's any water in the lower unit it's going to be the very first thing that comes out when you pull that screw out if you see water it's time to stop take your motor to a professional let them find out where the seal that's leaking may be it could be around one of these gaskets that goes into the actual plugs but there's also seals on your prop shaft and also on the drive shaft and your shift shaft so there's several different points where water could enter into your lower unit so if you find water it's time to get a professional to look at it and get it taken care of if you don't see any water you just see oil it's going to be kind of thick as it comes out so then we remove the top screw so it'll completely drain out into your retaining pan that you have underneath and let the oil drain out if it's a colder day it's going to take longer if we're below 60 degrees you're going to see it really come out kind of clumpy and chunky the colder the weather it is the longer it's going to take but let it drain out give it a half an hour or so to drain go inside and watch a fishing show 
when you come back out, you can go ahead and just put your new lower unit oil back in. To do that, you're going to screw the threads into the bottom of the lower unit, down here in the threaded part, and you always fill it from the bottom side because when you pump the oil in from the bottom, it'll force the air out to the top and that way the entire cavity gets full. If you were to try to fill it from the top with the bottom screw in, you're going to be pumping on top of air and you've seen bubbles and fluid, fluids not going in smoothly. That's what happens. You won't get it full. So you'll always fill from the bottom side. You pump it until it comes out the, the top plug. When the top screw comes, oil comes out of the top screw, put your top screw in. That way it won't siphon back out on you. And then you can remove your pump from the bottom, put your bottom drain plug in with your new gasket on it, put it back in, and you're ready to go. So just wanted to say thank you for watching today. I hope you learned something from what we've shown you. Remember, we've always got the parts here and the know-how, so when you come in, we can show you exactly how to do this again. If you have any questions or where things go, feel free to ask our staff. We're more than happy to help. And always remember to do the, the maintenance on your motors in the fall before you put it away so you can have a great spring and summer ahead. And enjoy yourself. Let's go to the lake.